what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're gonna be talking about several different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about anaconda we'll be talking about scream 7 we'll be talking about an alien romulus sequel and we'll be talking about beetlejuice beetlejuice so just to start off here with this anaconda news that we got because it's been a while since we talked about anaconda the Hollywood reporter put out an update on the upcoming Hannah anaconda movie yesterday by the time this is uploaded it says jack black and paul rudd who i think we've heard about before in the past just rumored at the time but says jack black and paul rudd are in early talks to star in the reimagining of the 1997 horror movie that launched the mini franchise tom gormican who directed the nicholas cage meta movie the unbearable weight of massive talent is co-writing and directing the feature according to sources the new story involves a group of friends facing midlife crises who are remaking their favorite movie from their youth they head to the rainforest only to find themselves in a fight for their lives against natural disasters giant snakes and violent criminals it's unclear who is playing whom one source said black would play in an erstwhile director a man stuck in his job as a wedding videographer while rudd would play an actor who did a stint on a cop show but sees the hollywood dreams slipping further and further away another another source said it was the other way around the project has been percolating at the studio since 2023 and has gone through many rewrites as the filmmaker and Columbia tried to find the right balance of tones. Now, I can only say reading this does not make me excited for the project. That does not mean it won't end up being good. But of course, if you're someone like myself who grew up with that Anaconda franchise, especially those first two movies, this does not sound like something I would want to see. Now, this is lining up with some of the rumored plot details that were out there. But as of late, off of this report, this isn't doing anything to boost my interest other than, of course, Jack Black and Paul Rudd, who I expect would deliver adequate performances. That's about it. So we'll see what comes of that. Now we're going to talk about this Alien Romulus sequel. Fetty Alvarez chatted with The Hollywood Reporter about a potential Alien Romulus sequel. He said, yes, I definitely can pitch a sequel right now. We tend to do that naturally, not even thinking about sequels. For us, movies have not become franchises, tempos, and sequels. This is a language I've only learned in, in the last 10 years of my life working in Hollywood. For me, it's always about the story. So once we finished, we started thinking, what do you think happens when or if they get to Yavaga? Is it going to be great or is it just a terrible place? We tend to believe it's probably a terrible place that they think is great and fantasize about. So we naturally started thinking about where it goes and what's going to happen. And then a few minutes in, we go, oh, that sounds like a sequel. But we really try to think about it more in terms of story and if it needs another chapter and whether people want to know what happens next. My philosophy is that it, that you should never make a sequel in two years. You got to get away. You've got to get away. you got to get the audience to really want it. If you think about Alien and Aliens, there's seven years between them, but we definitely have ideas about where it should go. Now, I like the way he's thinking, and I wouldn't be against a Romulus sequel, but just to have a joke really quick. I'm sure Disney doesn't want to wait around years <laughs> before they can generate money from a product that ended up being a worthwhile investment. Now, I think the budget was around 80 million and this movie has already made over 100 million. So it still has a ways to go, I think, before it actually is profitable. But if it is a success for Disney, I doubt Disney will want to wait two to five years or anything like what happened from Alien to Aliens before they give us another Alien film. If anything, that Romulus sequel will be kicked into high gear and if fetty alvarez isn't down because it doesn't go along with his philosophy then disney will just find a new director because it's their property that's again me just talking about the reality and joking a bit because while i respect his philosophy the thing that will tower down on that are the rights holders and right right now that's disney and if disney wants that sequel next year they're gonna get it so now we can talk about beetlejuice 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 reviews will start to appear online September 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern. That is when the embargo will lift for this sequel. If you live in the States, I th I think that's... Um, well, no, no, no. What I meant to say is if you live in the UK, I think that will be 9 p.m. for you at, at that time. At 4 p.m. in the States, that's 9 p.m. in the UK. I just wanted to share that in case someone listening is interested in knowing when they can expect reviews to drop. It's supposed to have its debut at the Venice Film Festival next week, which could lead to some social reactions appearing online, but not full-fledged reviews. We've gotten three new clips that dropped from the film so far as well. You can search them on YouTube if you want to watch. But one clip with Delia seems to confirm something I shared about her. Delia's dialogue reveals she's still into art. And if you've been following me, you know I've talked about how she's supposed to be running an art gallery now. 
I don't believe we've caught a glimpse of this gallery just yet, but hopefully that aspect of the story wasn't cut because hearing her talk about art in this capacity in this clip leads me to think that we are going to be seeing that art gallery in Beetlejuice Beetlejuice because she's supposed to be running an art gallery that at least was a part of some of their original plans. Whether or not it got shot, that's what I do not know, but I expect we will find out, of course, once the film drops. More recently, I have been hearing that the film is fine from those who have seen it out in California, but all I can say in response to that is it doesn't need to be spectacular. I mean, if it's spectacular, that's fine. I'm not going into Beetlejuice Beetlejuice wanting it to be better than the original. As long as you're a solid film and a solid sequel that can be a fun thing to turn on on its own, that'll be enough. It doesn't matter if you're inferior to your predecessor. I don't think anyone who's trying to be realistic with this project is expecting you to be better than your predecessor. Just don't be a complete don't be a complete stain and slap of the face to your predecessor. That's about it. So if it's just an OK movie, that's fine. At least you won't be a slap or a stain to the predecessor, which I have great confidence will still remain the superior film. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about here is Scream 7. Scream 7 is supposed to shoot from December 2024 through March 2025. Shout out to UK for sharing this information with me. This is coming to us from Production Weekly where it lists that the status of the film is still eyeing December 2024, but it's supposed to now shoot from December through March. At first, I was like, that's a long time for a slasher film, but then I started considering, well, Scream 4 had a similar shooting schedule. Now, I don't know how much of that was related to some setbacks on set, and of course, the stuff with Kevin Williamson walking out before filming was even done, Aaron Kruger being brought in for rewrites and stuff like that. I don't know how much of that played into their filming schedule. But December to March, the positive outlook for me would be that you're trying to, of course, construct the best slasher film that you can. Which would lead me to think that, again, those artistically involved, Kevin and Nev and the cast, they're going into this wanting to do something of quality. No matter what has been done, that, of course, has tainted the IP at the end of the day, we're still getting the movie. I do not want a screen film that is trash. I don't want it. As much as I'm in disagreement with getting another Sydney film that's focused entirely on her, we're getting it. And if we're doing this, you better do it right. That's all I can say. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and miss a video. In the description, I have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.